Hello, and welcome to the next episode of my life, I guess. Really, my academic life. No, I'm just kidding. It's not really that boring. Uh, sometimes lectures can get a little dull, but it's cool. Um, so anyway, yeah, it's uh, it's it's uh, Monday, June 4th. Uh, like I said in the last video, it's been a couple days. Uh, but right now we're going to talk about this past Saturday, which was the 2nd of June, I do believe. It was my third day in audio post, and I'll go ahead and talk about uh, some of the online class stuff as well. Uh, but let's go ahead and start with audio posts because we're kind of on that roll right now. I didn't really talk about the online class uh, in the last video, but we'll get there. I'll make sure I talk about it today. So lecture three, ADR and Foley. Foley. Okay, I'm acting goofy. Uh, pretty good... Um, Lecture, it was really cool. The, so for the first half, like I said in the last video, there were some of the stuff from Lecture 2 that we didn't get to, so we had to get through that real quick. Um, and then we started uh, going through the stuff that was actually for Lecture 3. And so, of course, ADR and Foley. So what is ADR? Uh, well, that's basically where uh, you have the actor come back to a studio and re-record their lines. And it stands for Automated Dialogue Replacement, and it's pretty cool. We watched a video clip of um, the ADR session for King Kong, and that was really neat. Jack Black was in it and everything. He was funny. Um, but yeah, I mean, we talked about what is it and why you, why, you know, what are some of the benefits of it. And we also discussed well, what are some of the, uh, you know, the downsides to it. What are, what are some of the detrimental things about doing ADR? And, of course, you have things like, you know, it's expensive. You might not be able to if you're on a budget and all that. Um, and we'll discuss some ADR techniques, uh, how to set up mics. I mean, you have two basic styles, and, and it's really easy. You have, like, a one mic setup, which is called a single mic, and then dual mic setup, which, as you can probably imagine, has two mics. Mm. Uh, and then we discussed how to set up the tracks and Pro Tools for each of those. Or any DAW, I suppose. But Pro Tools is pretty much what you're going to find everywhere. Uh, and then we looked at uh, Ghost Regions, which is part of uh, uh, doing that. And then the 3 beep queue. And basically, a 3 beep queue is just like your Academy Leader, except you put it uh, 3 seconds, um, or 4 seconds, no, yeah, 3 seconds before the actor is supposed to come in. So you have to do it for every spot that the actor has to do their line. And basically, they're each a second apart. Um, and so, you know, the actor has beep, beep, beep before they come in. So they know when their line starts. Um, we talked about recording ADR and then uh, the ADR spot log or recording sheet, which is writing everything down, just recording what's going on. Um, and we looked at ADR editing, of course, uh, looking at alternate takes and all that. Uh, and basically just bringing the best take out to the top, or comping a take, uh, if you need to. Uh, and then we jumped into Foley. Um, and that was the second half. So the first half, we finished uh, the Lecture 2 stuff, and then begun or began the Lecture 3. And then we went on break, and then we came back to talk about Foley. And we actually had the assistant course director come in. I can't remember the guy's name, but he actually does Foley. Like, he... He's like one of the he's like the Foley guy here in Orlando, and uh, basically people hire him to record Foley for their movies and and so you know and he kind of went along with the slides and um, was telling us about what he does and how he got started and you know we discussed what it was some of the history behind it and uh, you know uh, some of the principles behind Foley like there's four basic categories you have. Movement, footsteps, incidentals, and custom elements, four different types of Foley. Um, we talked about, well, why should you do Foley? Uh, what else? Um, oh, and where you do Foley. And we looked at some Foley stages, and Foley stages are really cool. Uh, like, they're, they're really nice looking. And, of course, we looked at how it's done, how it's recorded and mic'd and everything, and uh, spotting for Foley. And then we went into more Pro Tools stuff, and we looked at how to export uh, Pro Tools sessions as text files, uh, which is actually a function that only the, the HD rigs will do. Um, we looked at Track EDLs, which is the Edit Dialog List, and Q 
cue sheets, fully cue sheets, fully wish lists. Um, and then that was about the end of it. But it was more, I tell you, more than just boring, filling in the blank, looking at the slides. Uh, because the assistant course director, as I mentioned, he actually does Foley. They had a, a blue microphone set up, and we actually watched them, uh, the two instructors of the class. They basically recorded and put Foley to a clip of um, like a student movie or something of Marilyn Monroe. So basically the, the assistant course director, he put on a pair of heels, and he was making the walking sounds and the scraping sounds, and... It was just cool. We actually got to watch the process of recording Foley and having it put to a to a, a clip. It was really awesome. It was right there in front of us. You know, it was. I couldn't have thought of a better way to actually explain to us what Foley was or anything. So, yeah, it was really cool. And then Lab was directly after that. I had Lab uh, right after that, and it was supposed to be a two-hour Lab. But it actually only ended up being like a half hour, maybe 45 minutes. And what we had to do was record some dialogue. We had we took uh, six different takes. So basically, uh, two people had to record uh, the same dialogue inside. And then we took room tone, like just some room tone of, of where we recorded the dialogue. So that was the first three takes. And then we did the exact same thing outside. So that was the six takes. And then we had to... Um, get those files off of our field recorder and onto our computer, which I actually don't think it was uploaded to the Dropbox yet, which uh, needs to happen pretty soon, because there's a homework assignment that has to do with us editing those dialogue things. I'm pretty sure we're going to have to move stuff around and whatnot, so uh, it's pretty important. But my group, we'll go ahead, we went ahead and got our Dropbox set up and all that, so uh, it was pretty cool. So that lab was really short, really easy, pretty fun actually, um, and I'm looking forward to working with it. If only we could get all the tracks up there. We've only got two of the tracks, so yeah, those um, that that lecture lab was great. As far as the online class stuff, uh, basically I didn't have too much to do. I had another one of those worksheet quiz things for chapters three and four in the textbook, which talked about I think. Uh, was country no it wasn't country music it was blues and gospel and then early popular music uh, so that was chapters three and four and then also I had the uh, listening quiz and essentially okay so we had that long we had a long list of listening homework and it was at least two hours worth of music and we had to listen to all these songs and then basically they check our last .fm account to make sure that we listen to it and we get our grade based on listening to music. And so the quiz for the lis or the listening homework assignment was to listen to the songs and then we had to go and click on a link and take a quiz thing. So in the quiz there was a link to a song and it would open up in Spotify. And based on the homework, so the homework was to help us we had to listen to the song and then choose which genre of music it most closely fit to. And it was pretty tough. I, I There were ten questions, and I, I missed two of them. So I got an 80 on it. Not too bad. Um, but it was still tough enough, you know. And then, of course, they had a practice version that was extra credit. So I did horrible on the extra credit. I got, like, a 70 or a 60 or 70 or something like that on the extra credit. But I still got the extra credit. Uh, however much it's worth, so I'm I'm not too worried about the 80 that I got on the real thing. So hopefully the extra credit will make up for that. Uh, but otherwise, that was about it for this past weekend, uh, as far as music history one goes. I know there's also a music history two class in a couple months, but uh, I'm not quite there. But oh, but yeah, I'm in uh, music history one right now. That's the online class. Uh, so yeah, going pretty good. Had a nice relaxing weekend. I had good two days off, which is nice. Uh, tomorrow I have class, a nice eight-hour day. Looking forward to it. And then I have Wednesday off. So, oh, yeah. Should be really good. I've been doing um, the X-Stretch DVD from P90X, like, every day since, like, Thursday or Friday or so, since Thursday, actually. And so I've been stretching a lot. I've been working out with uh, my friend Dustin a lot. I've been practicing drums hell of a lot. Like, ridiculous, like, two hours a day. 
And so, yeah, I mean, I'm strengthening up and getting ready for drum corps auditions, basically. I'm excited to go out to the Crossman. Um, lots of great things happening, that's for sure. I'm happy. Um, starting to eat better again because I was eating pretty crappy for a while. I won't lie. But uh, this new grocery store opened up called Fancy Fruits, and it's down the road a little ways, about a mile or so down the road, and it's so cheap. Like, apples, it's like two, three-pound bags. So basically six pounds of apples for five bucks. That's ridiculous. That's, that, that's like amazing cheap. So I've been having lots of, like, real fresh homemade apple juice and orange juice. Like, I've been making orange juice in the mornings, uh, like, I'll do X stretch, and then I'll make orange juice for breakfast. Um, and it's awesome. Like, I've been feeling great. Uh, so, <sighs> thumbs up for me. I don't know. I feel good. Hope you guys are feeling good. Hope you guys are digging the videos. Because uh, I've been enjoying making them. Uh, especially because I've really had time this month to just kind of relax a little bit. I'm d really digging into Pro Tools. Like this book, I've been reading the Pro Tools 110 book, uh, which was one of the books we got from way back in um, audio workstations. But it's just, it's awesome to go back and read this stuff because, like, I really want to get, I, I want to know Pro Tools. I don't want to just be good at it, but I want to know it. You know, I want to be like, the thing I do not like about this school is it's, okay, it's, it's kind of a weird thing. I like the fact that they introduce us to a lot of stuff. They make us really well-rounded audio people. But, okay, the downside to that, and this is, I like, okay, like I said, I enjoy the fact that we become well-rounded. I don't like the fact that we do not have an opportunity to truly specialize in something. And so to really specialize and become good, or like really expert good in one area, you have to dig into it yourself or really spend time and get extra help with it. And so, like a, like, a buddy of mine, he, he's really into the audiotronic stuff. He loves, like, making things and soldering stuff, and that's cool. And for me, like, my thing that I want to specialize in is Pro Tools because it's just, like, I get it. It's the one thing that I understand and I'm pretty good at using. Uh, I passed the class with flying colors. Like, seriously, I had the highest grade in the class. Um, so, like, I understand Pro Tools. I get it. It just... it. It clicks for me. So I'm really studying the books. Like I've got three books right now. Three decently sized pro books on Pro Tools. And the first book, the most basic book, I've read. I've read this entire book. As you can probably tell, I've, I've read this thing. Uh, and so I've just begun doing that with the Pro Tools 110 book, and then I will do the exact same thing with the 210P book, which is the post, or, or just production book, which is, uh, this is the one that I got this month. I've had this one and the other one since uh, Audio Workstations. So by the end of the month, I'll probably have gone through all three of these all over again, so yeah, great stuff. Reading about Pro Tools, many people like to read fantasy stories, some people like to read murder stories. I like to read Pro Tools books. To each their own, I suppose. Anyway, guys, I'm going to go ahead and call it a wrap. Uh, if you heard any music in the background, it was uh, I'm listening to BassDrive.com right now. Awesome website. 24-hour um, worldwide drum and bass music. It's amazing. Uh, but you probably didn't hear anything. I've got it pretty quiet. And this is a cardioid mic. I'm oh, and if you're wondering, I, I this is just a Shure SM58. I mean, it's probably one of the most the most common microphone out there aside from the SM57. Uh, so I don't have anything fancy. It's just a 58, uh, but it sounds good. I like it. It works. It's not ever gonna break on me. So, yeah, great stuff, guys. Uh, take it easy. I'll see you tomorrow after everything's all said and done. Uh, so yeah. Until next time, peace out.